Well, good morning. Good morning and hello to everybody. Welcome to my channel. I wanted to do a um, thing on depression this morning because I did one on bipolar BPD, bipolar and BPD combined. So I wanted to cover depression because um, depression is an issue that a lot of people go through. So I'm going to cover depression and anxiety and see if this helps any for anybody. So I'd love to um, put awareness out there for anything I can that may help anyone. And mental health is a huge, huge issue. So if I can help, I would love to. <clears throat> so I am going to tell, like describe what depression is and, you know, some symptoms and possible stuff that may be able to help. So it might be boring at first, but we'll get through this. And thank you for joining me. And good morning, good afternoon, wherever you may be. And remember to hit that like button if you're not always already subscribed please hit that subscribe button Hold on. Okay, there we go. All right, so let me get started here. What is depression? Depression is major um, depression. You can have um, major depression or clinical depression. So depression is a common and serious medical illness that negatively affects how you feel the way you think and how you act. Fortunately, it is also tre treatable. Depression causes feelings of sadness and or a loss of interest in activities you once enjoyed. It can lead to a variety of emotional and physical problems and can decrease your ability to function at work and at home. Depression symptoms can vary from mild to severe and can in include feeling sad or having a depressed mood, loss of interest and in pleasure in activities once enjoyed, changes in ap appetite, weight loss, or gain unrelated to dieting, trouble sleeping or sleeping too much, loss of energy or increased fatigue. Let me just scroll down a little bit. Increase of pur purpose purposeless physical activity, inability to sit still, pacing, hand wringing, or slowed movements or speech. These actions must be severe enough to observable by others. Those are some symptoms that are very severe. Feeling worthless or guilty, difficulty thinking, concentrating, or making decisions, thoughts of death, death or suicide, Symptoms must last at least two or three, two weeks and must represent a change in your previous level of functioning for diagnosis of depression. Also medical conditions can make you depressed and mimic these symptoms. So such as thyroid problems, a brain tumor or vitamin deficiency, such as like vitamin D causes these symptoms. You know, so you definitely, when you go to the doctors, you ask for a whole workup, mostly in adults. You ask for all the testing and everything else to make sure that you get the root of the issue. So 
that you can treat the problem 1000% the right way because people get misdiagnosed if we don't do this. And it happens to a lot of people. Depression affects an estimated one in 15 adults in any given year. And one in six people, 16.6%, will experience depression at some time in their life. Depression can occur at any time, but on an average, first appears during the late teens to mid 20s. Women are more likely than men to experience depression. Some studies show that one third of women will experience a major depressive episode in their lifetime. There's a high degree of it being inherited, approximately 40% when first degree relatives, parents, children, siblings have depression. Okay, hold on. Let's go down. I want to see how long. So I'm going to share this brief video with you guys. Hopefully it won't be boring. It is from the Psychiatric Institute. So a little bit more information. Depression is different from sadness or grief, bereavement. The death of a loved one, loss of a job, or the ending of a relationship are difficult experiences for a person to endure. It is a normal failing of sadness and grief to develop in response to such situations. Those experienced loss often might describe themselves as being depressed. But being sad is not the same thing of having, having depression. The grieving process is natural and unique to each individual and shares some of the same features of depression. Both grief and depression may involve intense sadness and withdraw from usual activities. They, also, they are also different in important ways. In grief, painful feelings come in waves, often intermixed with positive memories of the deceased in major depression, mood and or interest are decreased for most of decreased for most of two weeks. <clears throat> and grief self-esteem is usually maintained. In major depression, feelings of worthlessness and self-loathing are common. In grief, thoughts of death may surface when thinking of or fantasizing about joining the deceased loved one. In de major depression, thoughts are focused on ending one's life due to failing worthlessness or undeserving of living or being unable to cope with the pain of depression. Grief and de depression can coexist for some people. The death of a loved one is losing a job or being a victim of physical assault or a major disaster can lead to depression. When grief and depression co-occur, the grief is more severe and lasts longer than grief without depression. Risk for depression. Several factors can play a role in depression. 
biochemistry, D differences in certain chemicals in the brain may contribute to symptoms of depression. Genetics, depression can run in families. For example, if one identical twin has depression, the other has a 70% chance of having the illness sometime in life. Personality, people with low self-esteem who are easily overwhelmed by stress are or who are generally pessimistic, appear to be more likely to experience depression. Environmental factors, continuous exposure to violence, neglect, abuse, or poverty may make some people more vulnerable to depression. How is depression treated? Depression among the most treatable of mental disorders between 80% and 90% of people with depression eventually respond well to treatment. Almost all patients gain some relief from their symptoms. Before a diagnosis or treatment, a healthcare professional should contact a thorough diagnostic evaluation, include an interview and a physical examination. In some cases, a blood test might be done to make sure the depression is not due to a medical condition, like a thyroid problem or a vitamin deficiency. Reversing the medical cause would elevate the depression like symptoms. The elevation uh, valuation will identify specific symptoms and explore medical and family histories, as well as cultural and environmental factors. With the goal of arriving at a diagnosis and planning a course of action. Medication. Brain chemistry may contribute to an individual's depression and may be the factor into the tr their treatment. For this reason, antidepressants might be prescribed to help modify the brain chemistry. Excuse me. Um, these medications are not sedatives, uppers, or tranquilizers. They are not habit-forming. Generally, antidepressant medications have no stimulating effect on people not experiencing depression. Antidepressants may produce some improvement within the first week or two of use, yet full of benefits may not be seen for two to three months. If a patient feels like fails little or no improvement after several weeks, his or her psychiatrist can alter the dose of the medication or add or substitute another antidepressant. In some situations, other psychotropic medications may be helpful. It is important to let your doctor know if a medication does not work or if you experience side effects. Psychiatri psychiatrists usually recommend that patients continue to take medications for six or more months after symptoms have improved. Longer term maintenance treatment may be suggested to decrease the risk of future episodes for certain people at risk. Psychotherapy or talk therapy is sometimes used alone for treatment for mild depression. For moderate to severe depression, psychotherapy is often used along with antidepressants. Medications, cognitive behavioral therapy, I highly recommend, has been found to be effective in treated depression. CBT is a form of therapy focused on the problem solving in the present. CBT helps a person to recognize distorted negative thinking with the goal of changing thoughts and behaviors to respond to challenges in a more positive manner. Psychotherapy may involve only the individual, but it can include others. For example, family or couples therapy can help address issues within these close relationships. Group therapy brings people with similar illnesses together in a supportive environment and can assist the participant to learn how others cope in similar situations. Depending on the severity of the depression, treatment could take a few weeks or much longer. In many cases, significant improvement can be made up, can be made in 10 to 15 sessions. ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, is 
very rarely used nowadays. It is a medical treatment that has been most commonly reserved for patients with severe depression who have not responded to other treatments. It involves a brief electrical stimulation of the brain while the patient is under anesthesia. A patient typically receives ECT two or three times a week for a total of six to 12 treatments. It is usually managed by a team of trained medical professionals, including a psychiatrist, an anesthesiologist, and a nurse, physician, assistant. ECT has been used since the 1940s, and many years of research have led to major improvements in the recognition of its effectiveness as a mainstream rather than a last resort treatment. Self-coping, self-help and coping. There are, no, there are a number of things people can do to help reduce the symptoms of depression. For many people, regular exercise helps create positive feeling and improves mood, getting enough quality sleep on a regular basis, eating a healthy diet and avoiding alcohol. <clears throat> alcohol is a depressant, so you might wanna avoid this. Depression is a real illness. It help is available. With proper diagnosis and treatment, the vast majority of people with depression will overcome it. If you are experiencing symptoms of depression, a first step is to see your family physician or psychiatrist, talk about your concerns, and request a thorough evaluation. This is a start to addressing your mental health needs. So that's what they have for the um, definition of depression and coping skills in the treatment, which is so very true. There's so many that do suffer from depression, but there is help out there. And um, <clears throat> and there's so many places you can reach. If you are at the point that you feel like there is no help out there. I am going to put this number up there just so you know that there's somewhere you always can reach. So I'm going to share this number with you. It's 1-800-273-8255. So the official website, I'll pull it up. 1-800-273-8255. Or you can bring up suicidepreventionlifeline.org and you can talk to somebody on here and they have a bunch of resources on here. So, and people's stories and such. And it says, get help, learn, get involved. There's all types of stuff. They're open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So always know that there's someone out, out there that you can talk to and always reach out for help. Always reach out for help. And I'm so grateful for you guys watching my videos. Thank you so very much for coming in and watching about depression. Um, but I'm gonna close up for the day because I did pre-record this because I wanted to make sure that you guys had a awareness video on mental health awareness. Um, mental health awareness doesn't just come once a year, once a month, uh, one month. It, mental health awareness is all year round. So I wanted to keep going with bringing up mental health issues that are real and are ongoing. Thank you again for coming in. I love you all. You guys have a great day.